hearing of the Zoning Board of Appeals for uh, Thursday, August 4th, 2014. Uh, is there any matter of public comment on the sort of wishes to address? Well, if not, then I'll turn to our only matter today. Carolyn Mish, uh, she's the secretary of the sort of system of the uh, zoning office. Bob Riddle is here, uh, Elizabeth Silver, and I'm Barry Smith. Uh, and let's see, two of us, or all three of us, have been on, I think, this time. Right. And we then turn to the only matter on our agenda, which is the appeal of the building commissioners really by 11 School Street uh, Limited Liability Company for property at 15 School Street Northampton, map ID number 31D-194. And uh, would the appellant please address us? Good ap afternoon. I'm Edward Etheridge. I represent the appellants, uh, John Hogan and, and Mickey Marcus, who have an LLC to hold their property at 11 School Street. Um, they uh, are, have renovated the property with the intent of uh, moving here, um, and they have uh, filed this appeal uh, with the building commissioner uh, and then appealed the decision of the building commissioner. Their appeal is based essentially on two grounds, um, or on two complaints. The main complaint is the property uh, is not a residential property, so none of these uses are accessory to any personal use. It's a piece of property with no residence on it. So whatever is occurring there should be occurring there. Um, it can't occur there as some sort of accessory use. I mean, it can only occur there, but there's no accessory use of a residential use for it to occur there. Uh, Mr. Florio uh, does not reside there, um, hasn't been a residence. Um, the uh, primary objections, as you can see, if you have the materials attached to our complaint and the letter to Ms. Mish um, identify the complaints that they have aside from the um, state of the property uh, which we can't really do a lot about in the neighborhood. The violations we complain of are that there is a propane tank on the property for which a permit was issued for personal use. Um, we do not believe it's personal use. Uh, while they were at their house, they saw a sign saying propane for sale. Um, it now has a sign that says propane filling station. Um, several of the other neighbors uh, are here tonight. They have seen um, the use or smelled gas that has escaped from the tank in the neighborhood. It's a completely residential neighborhood, and it's inappropriate for there to be a business use of a propane tank on the property. The second thing is that the property is lighted by a light, um, which is not in connection with a, any business use of the property that I understand is permitted. Mr. Florio's father at one point in time, years and years ago, uh, did some auto repair there, but we have no information, nor does anyone have any information that Mr. Florio does any automobile repair there. So we assert that that use is long abandoned. But there's a light that's been erected which does not meet the zoning requirements of the city and is a nuisance to everyone in the neighborhood. For the principal complaints, aside from the use of the property for purposes for which it's not permitted, including the propane tank, and with structures on the property being this noisome uh, light, uh, should be abated and not be allowed on the property. And that is the basis of our appeal. Uh, the appellants are here if you want to be heard, and there are some other people from the neighborhood who might want to speak to them. Can I just ask you, um, I was a little bit confused when I first went through your letter and then the prior letter and then the prior permit that got attached to, I guess, the building commissioner's response. So there was a permit in 2006 for the propane gas for use for a helium balloon? It, it's, it says, it uh, it yes, it's for was, personal right? use, yes. So are you contesting that too? I've never seen him fill a balloon there, so I don't know the answer. I, all I'm saying is the propane tank has to have signs on it offering it for sale okay. uh, and distribution to other people. I think in a residential neighborhood, tank ought only be permitted. Um, from the fire department's point of view, they have permitted it. 
but from their point of view, it ought to be permitted only in a residential neighborhood if it's connected. I had one in my house for many years. It was connected to my house. I didn't uh, disconnect it and reconnect it when I went places or wanted to fill my other propane tank. But in this particular case, when you're filling tanks in a neighborhood, that's a commercial use, of course, it does, not a residential use. But that's my question. I mean, it looks like there was a proper permit issue for the helium of the balloon, right? Are you, are you saying that was not issued properly? I, I, I'm just saying, if it were, had been used all along, not in the way that you're alleging it's being used, but in compliance with what the permit suggests, is there a I don't right think it should have been issued, but it's beyond the time I could appeal that permit. Okay, so were the... Um, so if it were used only for purposes, even though we believe the permit was improper, I cannot now appeal that permit. All right. So um, were uh, Mr. Florio now to say, I am only using it for helium, I only will, let's just put aside for now, what may have occurred in the interim between 2006 and 2014 when you raised this. Um, then the, the only remaining issue is the light, or is there something? As long as it's for personal use, but I don't understand. That goes back to my argument of how could you have personal use on a property where you don't live there? One more question. Do you know how he uses his hot air balloon? Is this is that for commercial purposes? I, I don't know the answer to that. I don't know the answer to that question. They are not filled or used there. They may be other tanks that are filled that are taken somewhere that fill the balloon. He may get a fee for uh, using his balloon somewhere else. I don't know the answer, but certainly the balloons are not used there. And that would be my definition of personal use, is you would use it there. You have no residence there, so I don't know how you could personally use it. I'm not sure that personal use is confined to things like residential, but anybody else know? Okay. So, is there any, oh, so anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the appeal? Um, yes, would you please identify sure. yourself? My name is Mickey Miller. I'm co owner of the house at 11 School Street, the one that we just renovated. And we have but 15. Um, and I have to write this down, I'm afraid I won't remember everything. Um, I personally knocked on neighbors' doors and asked their opinion of a large tank, large gas tank. It's a 500 gallon tank. And the commercial light at School Street. And five of the abutting houses to the subject property, uh, four of the uh, four opposed the gas tank and the commercial light. Um, I was unable to reach the fifth homeowner. No one I spoke to thought either the light or the gas tank was appropriate in their neighborhood. Um, many other neighbors also voiced concern and object to the gas tank and commercial light. Not all could be here, but I want to thank those who did feel strongly enough to be here today. Um, one of the most troubling stories I heard was about the gas tank, it was from a neighbor directly behind the property who smelled gas at one point on his property and called the authorities. Uh, the tank's valve had been left open and the user left the property and it built up enough gas that a neighbor smelled it and called the authorities. Um, what if a spark, what if a child playing with a cigarette lighter, what if somebody smoking a cigarette this is in a heavily concentrated residential neighborhood. There is no reason that tank is among us. May I opinion. ask you a question? Did you personally see a propane for sale I sign? Did. I did. You did? I did. In January and February. It's been taken down. It was a handmade sign. It, it says, it now is a very uh, professional looking sign. It says, uh, Propane filling station. It doesn't limit it for any particular use. It just says propane filling station. Seems but to me. In mean, January and February, it was a handmade sign that said propane gas for sale. Did you see anything that looked like a transaction where somebody bought propane? I did not. 
Sorry. Um, I just, you know, the large propane tank, it's not safe in a residential neighborhood. Um, it's not connected to a dwelling. It does not provide heat, you know, to any building. Um, we need your help. It just doesn't make sense. Um, pride of ownership is obvious in the neighborhood. People are fixing up their homes. It's becoming a really beautiful little pocket neighborhood. Um, it's walkable to downtown. People are just, you know, the kids are all playing around there. It's a beautiful little neighborhood, except for one property. And it seems as though we're not getting help to make it a safe place for all the residents. Okay, thank you very much. Hi, my name is John Hogan. I'm the other uh, owner of uh, 11 School Street. I'm an attorney, but I'm not licensed in, in Massachusetts. And I'm also not a land use lawyer, so, which will unfortunately be very clear. Um, but I guess the thing that concerns me is I went through the file, on, uh, the city's file on this, and read how a building inspector was assured by Mr. Florio that it was only for personal use. It would not be commercial at all. And then told that, you know, we've, as you've been told, a series of signs. Um, the one that says for sale is gone, but for the last few months it says filling station, propane filling station. And it's not very good legal research, but I Googled the word filling station. <laughs> and you get Wikipedia that says it's the place where it gas is sold. That's the definition of a filling station. So my concern is that the promise to stop selling it would be a step forward, but just as a statement to the inspector years ago that it was not going to be used for sale and it's just been ignored. And so you have something that is very dangerous and the sale just continues. The other problem is to look at that neighborhood and look at that tank, it is just not credible that it's being used there to fill a hot air balloon. If, if it did, the thing that happened in Clinton, Massachusetts, recently where the hot air balloon went and caused all this damage, it just would be crazy to try to fill a hot air balloon there. The only way it would make any sense is to transport it, open it, close the valve, and it's just not safe. And so I think that whatever, um, I, I think there's almost just um, this lack of candor, which is very troubling. Mr. do you or does your attorney in this manner have a copy of the comment that was issued by the Mr. Because I have a letter from the building commissioner to attorney Evers from uh, May 2014, and he speaks of what's in it, but we don't have the actual comment. That's the application, but we don't, we don't know what the application is. I'll, 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 I'll defer to you. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. defer to someone who knows okay. what he's doing. Was there some question you had on it? It does have the note that says non commercial personal mm -hmm. use only. Right, I see, I see that with the check off where it's approved. I didn't know if there was anything in addition to that that specified the higher balloon. I mean, I know it's in the application, but um, is there, this is it? This is all that exists about the approval for the permit? Uh, you'd have to ask the building inspector. There's, there's nothing that's, that's more that I have. Our, our, our appeal was based simply on, it's quite clear to us, despite what it was approved for, not being used in that manner. Okay. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the appeal? In favor of the appeal? Hi, John Mistak. I'm the butter, previous owner of School Street and a butter on 24th Black Avenue. I think everybody doesn't understand the hot air balloon. They don't put gas in the hot air balloon, they put gas in tanks, which the flame inflates the balloon and makes it fly. So. Say there's a business there, he's filling tanks for his balloon, and I don't know who else, but anyway, it doesn't make much difference, but anyway, that, so there's a, it's a hot air balloon business that's there, and sometimes I wonder why, ever since the beginning, the yeah, auto body shop, or welding shop, and whatever, how did it evolve in the past 44 years like that, but anyway. Anyway, so that's thank you very much. Uh, is there anyone else who wishes to speak in favor of the appeal? Is there anyone uh, is there anyone present who wishes to speak? 
So the voice the appeal wishes to speak to some sort of building staff. Yes, sir. I am Louis Hasbrook, I'm the building commissioner. Yeah. And I first need to apologize to Attorney Etheridge. I didn't respond in a formal letter, I did it by email. And the second thing I need to apologize for is I didn't in the email address the issue of the light, which I'll get to, but um, I have researched our the, um, the building department's records and that's been a non-conforming property uh, as far back as I could find, which is 1970. Um, the propane filling station was put in in 2006 in order for uh, Mr. Florio to fill the tanks for the hot air balloons that he uh, operates. And he doesn't operate the hot air balloons out of that location, uh, but he does fill his tanks there. And that was, uh, a, that use was approved by my predecessor. And at that point, the, uh, there was an understanding, and I believe it's as a part of the uh, application that Mr. Uh, Florio made, it does describe is the use that he was seeking permission for as filling hot air balloon tanks. The, uh, the application doesn't it, say what the hot air balloon to be used for. Um, I would think that there's, the implication is that there's only one use for hot air balloons. Well, I don't know. I mean, um, well, you I think people I, ride on them. You, I you think can sell that, things. I, all that I can't speak specifically to that because I wasn't party to that specific discussion. So you don't know whether the hot air balloons are used solely for personal. Use. At this point, I do, and I know that at this point, the, the, the hot air balloons, people do get rides in the hot air balloons. I'll let Mr. Florio address whether he charges them for that. I have no personal knowledge. Okay. Thank you. Um, the, I wasn't aware, and it certainly wouldn't be allowed for Mr. Florio to sell propane out of his uh, facility. I think propane filling station is a descriptor not of the sale of the propane, but what the tank is for, as opposed to the use of, of uh, uh, propane for heating a house. Um, I would disagree with Attorney Etheridge as to whether there could be an accessory use to a commercial structure. Um, it's uh, it's clearly allowed in our zoning ordinance. It makes no reference in use descriptor of use. The definition of accessory use as to whether it would be a residential or commercial structure. And as far as the light goes, I will order Mr. Florio that either remove the light or change it for a light that is uh, meets our current ordinance, which is to say no glare would be allowed on site. Um, um, can we, at least with respect to the appeal, can we take the light issue off the table then? That is that you will investigate and you can maintain an enforcement proceeding with respect to that. And if it if it becomes an issue, it, it will it will in all likelihood be back for me. But I don't foresee I don't see a problem. But thank you very much. Uh, is there anyone else who wishes to speak? Yes, I'm sorry. I forget your name. My name is Charles Sinowitz. Yes, I, I, I represent Mr. Florio. Yes. And um, I, I think we have to put things in perspective here first. I've heard a lot from the appellants of. Uh, somebody said this, somebody spelled that, somebody saw this. And in any courtroom, that would not even be permissible unless that person's here telling you that. So we've heard a lot of scare things. But well, I think- They have the personal knowledge about the sign. Yes, uh, that, that's the only personal that's knowledge we've well, heard. That's a but pretty big piece of personal knowledge. Except Mr. Florio denies ever having put any sign like that up there. But I think we have to go back to, um, I have copies of various documents. I think you were talking earlier about a permit for the uh, for the tank. I don't know if you had that or not. No, that's not what I'm talking about. I have a set of for each of you. Yeah, that's the permit. It's in here. That's the permit applica application. Yeah, I have it. Sorry if I said Oh, 
Vai. As the document on top is the zoning permit application, if I put everything in the right order. And you'll see that the application talked about installing the, the, the propane tank to be used to fill the tanks on the, on the hot air balloon. Obviously, you don't fill the hot air balloon on that site because it goes up. <laughs> you go up there. So that, that was the reason for it. And he, would, the, he went through the process of a hearing and uh, being vetted on all of that at that time. And that was, I think, in 2006. And uh, it was approved. See on the last page it was approved and it says non commercial personal use only. And the personal use being to fill tanks for the hot air balloon, which was described in paragraph six. What did you miss? Sorry. So, um, so what we don't have starts with your comments on the hot air balloon. Okay, you don't have, you don't have this. We do. Mm -hmm. um, we are in the, uh, okay. That was not that. Yeah. All right. So anyway, that so that was allowed. That was allowed in 2006. His, his zoning permit application. As Attorney Etheridge correctly said, the time to appeal that would, would have been within I think it's a six-year period, but it's gone by. That he went through the process. It was approved, and he has the right to have that tank there for that purpose, to fill, it, to fill uh, the tanks for the hot air balloon. And that, you don't, you don't even have authority to overturn that part of that because he was granted that. Now, in addition to that, in 2007, he applied for a permit, and there's a copy of the permit in there from the fire department for the tank. And uh, they set some conditions about installing bumper guards, and you have that too. So not only did he get the zoning permit allowed in 2006, but he, he went through the process of having an inspected by, by the fire department and licensed, approved. He received the permit for that as well back in, I think that was 2007. And this use is uh, a non-conforming. He, 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 you'll see from the property records that um, He's been conducting, he and his father, since 1968, uh, auto repair, auto servicing business uh, on their property, and all your property cards indicate that that's a permitted use for that property at this time. So it, it, in spite of some of the allegations that it's not, uh, can't be used for that, it can be used for that. And it also, I believe, can be used as an accessory use. It's been there for right. 60 cents. When was it last used for auto repair? It's being used now. And you'll, you'll see he has a business certificate that he filed in March of this year even, uh, listing the business um, and, and uh, automobile welding and repair. There's a business certificate that shows it. And he's done that, he and his father, his father's no longer alive, but they've done that continuously since 1968. So, he's invested a lot of money in, in all of this because he's gone through the proper procedure. He's been permitted uh, under the zoning uh, ordinance back in, uh, in 2006. He's gone to the fire department, got approval, went through their process, and he, he would deny any commercial use, by the way. Of, 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 he doesn't sell this, this propane. He does not sell the propane. He uses it to fill his hot air balloon. And and what about this hot air balloon? Does he sell rides on those? I don't know if he sells rides on those, but even if he did, it, it's still not, the, the propane is not a commercial use. Oh, I wouldn't think it at all. I wouldn't think that someone would use any propane to sell rides to the on the balloon. It's, it's not personal, it's commercial, that's clear. I disagree with that. No, no I think so. Any time I sell something, then that's commercial use. That is, as a business of selling something. If he files tax returns, does he sort of list sort of the income that he had got? I don't do his tax returns. Uh, will Mr. Florio tell us? I'm sure Mr. Florio will be glad to answer some of Mr. Florio, will you tell us what is the status of 
for the year and the building inspector's report it said that you have a hot air balloon business is that right we own a hot air balloon and that happens to be uh, that propane is used for the hot air balloon that's my hobby that's mm -hmm. an interest i have i also i also fly an airplane that i keep in northampton at the airport i right. don't do anything commercially with either one I that's understand. a whole different places you don't sell rides on the journey so, that's for my own personal use and you, you've never had a sign on your business saying propane for sale? To my knowledge, there has never been a for sale sign on that tank enclosure. To my knowledge, I have never had a sign on that. There was a propane filling station sign in there presently because a sign is required by the fire department to have what the content is. So I perhaps, in error, should have deleted the filling station part of the sign because that's a sign that they issued me, the original uh, person and the people I bought the balloon and the tank from issued me that sign. I should have perhaps covered up the filling station so that the fire station, the fire department would know that's a propane tank. Basically. Well, I don't know that. I still have a few more. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, just a couple Excuse more. Me. And um, as a result of you know, the, the uh, request to the building inspector from the appellant, um, and again, they talk about on information and belief, and they think this is happening. And the building inspector went out, and you have this email to attorney after raise that says that he has personal knowledge. Apparently, it was a vehicle photographed that was supposed to be somebody else's vehicle, and he has personal knowledge that belonged to Mr. Florio, and it's used in his hot air balloon. Uh, that he has personal knowledge that Mr. Florio uses the building for automotive and equipment repair, and said he checked with the fire department for a permit, and I, I gave him the permit. So he's complied with everything from 2006 to 2007, and he does not use it uh, for any commercial use. And um, he, he went through the right process to get all these things allowed. And just because somebody moves into the neighborhood in January and decides they don't like the tank and start this process without maybe investigating as much as they should, I think Mr. Florio should be harmed by that because he's put a lot of money into it and this whole thing. So I think the appeal should be. And in terms of the light, uh, we're not acting for light. Uh, it's, the light. The light is owned by, I think, Mass Electric. But, uh, and there was a, uh, Mr. Foyer told me there was some kind of a shield at one point on it, which would have taken some of the glare away. But, and that broke or in some storm. So that may be a way to remedy it or lesser Wattage or something like that. We're not arguing about uh, something. Mr. Housing to check and so sure something to, yes. And, and, if, and I think the remedy would be if Mr. Florio were in violation of this special permit, uh, not special, but a violation of this uh, zoning ordinance or anything, it would be uh, to find it, not to take away. I don't think you have authority to take this permit, number one, but. I don't think you have authority to find it either. Well, I think the building inspector, I don't know. I, I'm not all that up. Yeah. So, how many tanks are filled for this? One tank that fills one tank? He, he fills one tank at a time. I think he takes two or three to go bring it to the balloon. But it's the same as, you know, there's, there's arguments in here about going through a neighborhood and everything. If you go to Walmart and buy a propane tank for your gas grill, you've got to bring it through the neighborhood as well. It's the same thing, the same type of tank. Can't buy a newspaper. <laughs> <laughs> The, who runs the auto body, the auto shop? Mike. He works there himself. Mike. Mike. Right, Mike? Mm -hmm. You work at, you run the auto body. Right. We run it's a uh, auto repair facility that we're only doing, uh, we're restoring automobiles for shows, auto shows, and that sort of thing. It's not, we don't do commercial work there. We don't do spray painting here. It's primarily enclosed. The building is air conditioned. We do everything inside. Try not to make any noise there. We're not there late nights or anything else. And, How many uh, people work in there? Just myself and once in a while a friend. So you're not really doing repairs for Mr. Walsh? We are for the general public, yes. You are doing repairs? For the general public, but only for specialized work. I won't, if you brought your car to me, I wouldn't fix it. If you brought me a 
a uh, 53 Studebaker, I might consider restoring it for you. Okay. So it's restoration? Restoration. It's not repair? Repair type of restoration. Do you Long ago, it was a, an electronics repair shop owned by a man named Robert Miller, and he used to install automotive radios long before we purchased the property. But the direct predecessor, when you bought the property, the prior owner, what did they do there? They automotive repairs. Automotive General, repairs. not, not no. the not the specialty. The specialty is the same. So is that like your living in the No, part, it's, it's partially, partially. I'm going to be making a living there, I hope, shortly, because I'm getting out of everything else. So, Mr. Florio, um, you've owned the property since 2006, is that right? Pardon me? You've owned the property since 2006? Um, before that. When did you? I don't remember. It was around then. I think I think I've owned it. My father passed away in '91, and I think I've owned it since '93. But I'm not sure. I would have to look up the records. He inherited it. I inherited it. Was he the one with the auto business, the the repair business? My father partially, and I was my and I and myself. I don't understand. Okay. At what point did it, it change? from being a, you know, just a general car auto repair to a special car business that you're doing now? Uh, probably, uh, probably in the mid-70s. I repair heavy equipment, and I keep my, my that's where the welding part of it, the welding is there. I repair heavy equipment, most of the heavy equipment I repair, you couldn't bring there. It's out in the field, it's, it's hard to do. So that, that's the base of operation. What kind of equipment? Like bulldozers and cranes and big trucks and rollers and paving equipment. Okay, so I'm, I'm confused because first you're saying that you have this specialty auto repair and the person before you did regular auto repair, but now you're saying you've had this since the mid-70s? If I, could, if I, could, I yeah. think what he's trying to say, if I'm correct me if I'm wrong, Mike, but he's done auto repair all the way through, and, and restoration is auto repair, by the way, I, I think. Right. But he's always done auto repair, or vehicle repair there, and part of it is, uh, is the restoration of vehicle is part of that auto repair. And your father brought the property. And father did it. And when did your father buy the property? 1964. 64, and then you and he worked. Yeah. They are the right. auto repair until right. his death in 1991, right. was it? Right. And then you inherited the property in 93 and continued the use, continued the use. Yeah. Right. Right. Now, why would you have, why don't you just put your hot air balloon tanks in a hot air balloon in a station where it didn't work or where do you launch it? When you, when you hot air balloon, you do it because of weather and what they call thermals, which means air coming up, heated air coming up from the ground. So when you fly your hot air balloon, you either fly it in the early evening, like right now, or in the early morning. So if I have an early morning flight, finding a station to fill the, the balloon is, was difficult. I had to go in many, many cases, or if I flew this morning and wanted to fly again this afternoon, I would have to go to Goshen to fill the balloon, for example. So putting in my own tank was a convenience. And I can also shop for price because that's that's another another advantage. So you're buying it in bulk? I'm buying it in bulk. I just, I, as a matter of fact, I just shopped for price for, for about a couple of weeks ago for hot air. And I found anywhere from $1.99 to $3.75. So, are you being quiet? Are you with me? Um, well, I would um, understand that urge to get a big tank and have your own tank and the convenience of that. Um, so, it, you, you've addressed pretty well that uh, you're not selling the propane 
for profit or for uh, for use other than uh, your hot air balloon. Um, it is pertinent whether you're selling rides or not, because then it's a business and it's part of the business use. Um, but the but the larger question, and, and you've also talked about the use for auto repair. So there's this this package of problems that have affected the neighbors. And um, so they've apparently been trying to figure out how to resolve it. Um, I haven't heard that there were a lot of uh, personal conversations and if there were ways to mitigate the harm or perceived harm. Um, is there a way to uh, decrease your impact on the neighbors. And uh, at, at this point, we're looking at an appeal of, so just specifically, so the zoning board, we have our, our jurisdiction right now, we are asked to um, appeal Bill Inspector's permit that allows the tank, correct? It's actually an appeal of, um, of lack of enforcement. <laughs> so, okay, so there's a request okay. for enforcement yeah. for this use that was perceived to be not allowed. Right. Um, so we uh, we see a fire department permit for the tank, um, and um, and yeah, there's some required placards whether they apply to whose business or not. Um, isn't so much the concern. The, the concern I have is that there's a bit of a problem in the neighborhood. And, um, you know, we want to be good neighbors and you want to find your hot air balloon and you want to work on your cars. So there's, there's a whole constellation of problems that happen with something like an auto repair business. And that's why we end up with zoning. That's why there is zoning because people get affected. There's a smell of gasoline, there's a smell of motor oil, there's a smell of spray paint, there's a smell of Bondo, whatever. Um, that isn't so appropriate um, in the neighborhood. And those regulations are getting tougher and tougher. You know, you have to have a, you know, air collection and, and scrub the pollutants out before the air is exhausted. And so there may be a handful of regulations that will end up being enforced on your auto repair business um, that might end up helping the neighbors be less concerned about the use of the property. So it's, it's, it's a whole thing that's been bubbling for a few years here to get us to this point. And so I'm, I'm thinking, what can be done to shift it? It sounds like you're agreeing, okay, I'll fix that light. But it's been broken for some time, and you haven't fixed it yet. And so that starts to look like... Um, wait, wait, mm -hmm. On the light, okay? Yeah. The light was installed in the spring of 1968. It was a different type of fixture. It had a shield on it that was that would only allow the light to shine on the building itself. Sounds good. Okay. That was the original intent for insurance purposes. Okay. Insurance? Insurance on the building. Oh, I see. For security? So security for the neighborhood. Security. Oh, okay. A couple of years ago, I can't remember exactly when it was, probably in 90, or 2002 or 2003, the light gave up. It wouldn't light. So I called the electric company. They own it. I rent it. They came down and said, oh, that light is no longer available. We put a replacement on it. The light that's there now is a replacement. And it doesn't have any fields. If we need to get something different, we can do that. Without a problem. Okay, that's up to the electrical. I will contact them. There should be no problem. Okay. 
so if, it's too much, if it's too much of a problem, uh, we'll do something different. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that basically was equipment that they installed, not me, that I rent from. It's about $30 a month. Okay. But it also security. It's also security for that neighborhood. Okay. As a matter of fact, there was a street light on that pole that lit the street. On the opposite side of the pole, they took it down because I'm paying for that light. Okay. I will contact I have some friends that were particularly in particular that. As far as we even asked you to consult with uh, the building inspector sort of for all of that because he sure. has the specifics. We could, we can specifically measure candle power and everything else if need be. I mean, the oh, electric company will, will work with it because they worked with me before on the original light. Mm -hmm. It was no problem. Mm -hmm. You use the gas in this tank to fill only your blood. Only I only your I only fill my balloon tanks only in your, the trailer, only your and the tanks that are in the balloon are inspected yearly. I know those tanks. I know what they are because I'm part of the inspection when I have them inspected up in Vermont. It has to be done by a federally licensed person that inspects those tanks. Those you fill tanks, the tanks to run a balloon in Vermont? No, it has to be inspected, and the man that inspects it is from Vermont. That's where I have to bring it to get it inspected. How often do you do this? How often? Um, probably twice a week in the fall. And how many takes are there in There's, the fall? Well, this is the best time of year to fall. Okay, so is it less often other times? Less often. So frequent, so twice a week? Yep. Okay, and how many tanks are there? There's four 10 gallon tanks. Um, and so, how, how long does it take to fill those tanks? 15 minutes. Total or each? 15 minutes total. Okay. Um, so, you've only used these a total of 30 minutes a week in the most frequently used season, is what you're saying? Yeah, I'm, we're not, I'm not there very quick. It's not, we don't fill the balloon very much. No, okay. I mean, we're not there okay. very much. And you've never, the propane in that tank has never gone to anybody other than your four tanks? Not to my knowledge. Well, who else is there that would know this? I don't know. So I'm, I'm, I'm told. I'm asking well, for a direct answer. I mean, uh, have yes, you no. never allowed anybody no. else to use the propane the besides pro your four tanks? My four tanks, yes. That's all that I know about. And the uh, is secure to camp. The bystander can't just come up and open up the tank. No, that was one of the requirements of the fire station that when I first put the tank in, the tank was placed on concrete blocks and I had to go to this hearing, which you have a result from, to the fire station and I had to put a fence up, a commercially, a commercial chain link fence six feet high that's locked. Okay. And... Okay, so Mr. Flurry, before you said you're the only person that works in this place, you don't have any employees. Right? No. Okay, so you keep saying not to my knowledge. Wouldn't you know if anybody else used the propane? I, Does anybody I don't, else have access that you do? No, I, I don't. I don't know. So is there some reason you can't unequivocally say yes or no that you're the only person and you're just using it for these 30 minutes every two weeks? Is there anybody else using this propane? I leave the gate unlocked. Sometimes when the propane filling people, the vendor, are coming to fill the tank. You're not there when that I'm not, I'm, always, I'm not always there when they fill the tank because they tell me they're going to be there at uh, Monday morning at 8 o'clock and they come Tuesday afternoon at 4. You know, that's it. So the people I deal with, they know, as a matter of fact, I'm going to issue them a key so that the gate will be unlocked. But I cannot tell you. My knowledge, I have never filled another tank other than in the balloons. Well, that's just not a knowledge. That's it. Either you have or you haven't. I, I'm not talking about the times that you're not away from it, although I would suggest that you not leave this unlocked and that you do make an appointment, but that's neither here nor there. But that, my question is, you know, when you've been there over these decades, have you ever had a lot of this propane to be used by anybody other than your four tanks? 
No. No, I, I, I think I'm correct. Did you wish to speak? Yeah, I'm uh, in favor of these building inspectors. Right, I'm Michael Snaver, right across the street, uh, 18th School Street. And, and we've been. Being this, I'm sorry. Joe Biala. Okay. okay, and we've been there. D I A L E K. And we've been there since the late 70s. So. And, you, know, you know, talk about commercial use, whatever he does is property, it's very quiet. I mean, you know. He's, he's got a welding truck that goes out every once in a while. Um, he's got the uh, the balloons, which we watch leave from the porch and come back in the evening. I mean, you know, we, we, we sit on our front porch and watch the world go by, so it's, uh, we have pretty good knowledge of what happened on the property. We've never seen any hint that he's selling the propane. Have you ever seen a sign of their propane for sale? I, if it was a hand-lettered sign, I'd never see it from where I sit. <laughs> um, yeah, and I don't go wandering around his property to look at it. So. You can see it from where you sit because? Because of my eyes okay. and the distance. All right. So, but we would, would you see somebody if they were just coming Yeah, to yeah, well, no, I can, we can see well enough for that. I mean, there, there doesn't seem to be any commercial activity as far as selling the propane. I mean, I, I see him pulling with his uh, vehicles. I don't actually see him filling his tanks. I assume that's what he's doing, but I don't know that you witnessed that. Great. You know, it's like, in, and as far as uh, the auto repair being noisy, or I don't know, see that we've been there a long time. So, you know, we have, a, we have, granted, we have a fairly big buffer between our property and his actual garage. There's a good expanse of, um, there's a few tr large trees, there's a, what, 50, 60 feet of lawn, something like that. So, I, you know, we have a pretty good buffer. Across the street, across the street directly right. across the street. In any event, the auto repair is not on the table. I mean, our solution no, no, the, the, There was some talk about the noise, yeah. neighbors complaining, and yeah. I don't want to be lumped into neighbors complaining because I'm not complaining. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak? The only other thing I'd like to say is there's a van sitting on the property yeah. now. Can we, oh, I'm sorry. Can we finish up the chair? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. 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 I will just, I'll just put in one thing for her. My name is Ann Bialik. Uh, it is just that uh, he's a quiet neighbor. He's usually accommodating. I mean, he has a fairly good sized parking lot, and if you ask him, and, and it's a very narrow street, not much parking, he'll very often let uh, workers or whatever use the parking lot. So, uh, a good accommodating uh, neighbor. Thank you. I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, again, Mickey Miller, the neighbor. Um, positively, there was a sign that said we're to paint gas for sale. Positively. Um, there's also a van sitting there today that advertises balloon lights. So, something is not honest here. Mr. Fowler, is there a a van on you which advertises balloon rides? There's a van parked there with a sign on the front of the van that says the balloon chase vehicle. And on the side. On the, on the side of the trailer it says that trailer was bought used. That's not my sign. I think he's conceding that it says balloon rides. <laughs> well, and I think the number on that van of, of the trailer is not too I think they're confusing van and trailer. Would, would you care to be Mr. Uh, more specific? It's a trailer. And what does it say? Um, I think I have a picture. We made the picture. No, our issue remains the same. Um, there was a sign for sale, and while we didn't see any sales, that's the concerning issue. Um, we'd like some surety. I mean, Mr. Sinowitz said you could find him. You can't find him, of course. Um, uh, Mr. Hasbro could find him, but having found that it's all perfectly um, only for personal use, he's not about to find him, which is why we 
broadly. Part of the discussion that's here, we'd like some certainty while the facts have been in somewhat, I don't want to say dispute, but at least at, at odds, um, what sort of things we could be assured of that if this is allowed to be there, the most assurance would be if it's not allowed to be there, but if it's allowed to be there, assured to be there, that the use would be somehow or other guaranteed or limited to be personal use. And I guess the light is off the table. Uh, he's agreed to take care of it and or the building inspectors agreed to enforce the ordinance. So in either of those regards, our concern is not. But the concern for the tank remains the same. Our view is the best enforcement to make sure it's not sailed or used commercially is not to have it then. But if you can find a lesser means with appropriate guarantees, that's your burden. But that's our burden. Yes. Hi, I'm Star Florio. I am sister of Michael Florio. I live kitty corner across the street on Four School Street. And uh, it is my understanding when I first heard your presentation of your buying the property that it was uh, going to be a residential property that you fixed it up, but you have no intentions of living there yourself. Sure. So that wasn't made clear. This is a, a property that he bought for um, rental use. He will not be living there. Right. And his main issue to all appearances seems to be the fact that the tank is unsightly to him and he finds it a little difficult to rent his property or sell the property with a propane tank next to it. Um, my argument would be it was there when you bought it. We have a picture of the trailer. Jeff Massimino, I live in 34 Fort Hill Terrace. I've known Mike's family for a long, long time, over 30 years. I walk by there all the time. I've never seen a for sale sign. Federal law says you're supposed to have some kind of propane pulling station, and I think I had a handwritten one there, but unless I see photographic evidence that there is a for sale sign in there, something doesn't smell right. Can you say your last name again? Massimino. Okay, you have a photo? Yes. Would you like us to see? It's not a great shot, but it's the... Arrow staff promotions, advertisement, room rides, corporate promotions, a... a uh, with some black out, mm -hmm. and that's the it's a it's a box trailer. The number that's on your van, the phone number, is that a working number? Does that belong to you? That trailer has been lettered was lettered when I purchased it. The phone number is not valid, so I should remove the decals from it and I probably will but it's nothing that I installed. And Arrow's dad is not going to interfere the right business? Or is it? Did you hear the, the question? No, no I didn't say it. Arrow's dad is not the main firm. Is that the main business? No. No. What is the main business? I just go under my floor and fly the balloon for the ground. I just have one a, a, a question. I don't know where this falls in, but I had a I only I had a couple of calls about the um, wanting to understand clarification about the application. Some was from residents, but one was from um, uh, Richard Justo who called me last week and said he was a partner of yours. He is a partner. And yes. said he was concerned about it because he, um, that. Um, it was a balloon filling station or filling tank for your um, business, the balloon flying business. For the balloon. And so um, he had, so I don't know where that fits into this, but I just, that he was concerned that he wasn't going to be able to come here because he had already had a flight scheduled and he had to cancel it. So that's I don't know if that's related to he also fills his tank with you or if he just was. Mr. Justo was my balloon partner in the, in the balloon and I'm learning to fly it and he's my instructor. So that's his concern. How long have you been flying? 
I've uh, been flying balloons for about six years. I have some health problems, so I can continue to get my license. And I have a private pilot's license for aircraft, but the balloon is a separate thing, so that's what we do. So uh, the, the permit for this is from 2007? 2007. So that's when I bought it, somewhere in 2006, somewhere in that area. And put in the propane tank to fill your hot air balloon, which you didn't start flying for a year. But you are flying it now. Once in a while, yeah. I am flying as much as I can. I should be up tonight, as a matter of fact. How many balloons do you have? Pardon me? How many balloons do you have? Just one. Just one. Does he get, get his uh, propane from your tank? No. No, my balloon is the only tank that the only tanks that are filled. But he flies your balloon. He flies my balloon with me as my instructor. And other people? No. Just you. Just me. Unless we unless we take somebody up for a, a fun ride, that's not commercial. So he only fills your balloon with your propane and he fills his other balloons with Elsewhere. somebody else's Okay. Um, I'd like to suggest that um, we have a 
a property that is pre-existing, non-conforming with a use that is commercial. I'm not sure I care if the sell rides, if that's commercial. I mean, it's true that it was represented as personal use. Um, Approved for personal use. Approved for personal use. Um, but this is our existing use, welding and equipment and all of the repair shops. So, if, you know, I, I, I have uh, sympathy on both sides, and, and, and I'm, I am looking at, there's, there is this pre-existing non-conforming use, and I, it, it seems to me that the auto business would have a little more impact on me as a neighbor. Um, than uh, someone filling the tanks periodically. Um, I'm not particularly concerned about the tank itself uh, because you know any anybody who has a house not directly on a gas line has a tank to three to five hundred gallons, um, um, and and it is permitted. Perhaps there is. Perhaps there was a mistake and someone left it open at one point and, and there should be some safety measure and or inspection for an instance like that. I'm not seeing uh, I can explain that defense. leakage if you yes. if you would. When the propane tank was first delivered from Beamer Propane in Glastonbury, Connecticut, it was set on I started to say it was set on a concrete it's on set on concrete blocks. It was partially filled, only somewhat partially filled. Now, this was investigated by the Northampton Police Department okay, at the time. One Saturday morning, Nancy, who's here, well, she's outside now, called me. I was out doing something. She said, the propane tank is leaking. I went to the yard immediately. Now the propane tank hadn't been filled yet by any vendor. It only was there because it had been delivered. Okay. Something, a squirrel, whatever, an animal, had chewed through the hose, the filling hose. The valve on the bottom of the tank was open. Okay. Not to my knowledge, I didn't open it, that's the way it was delivered. Beamer sent a man up right away. Bruce Beamer sent a man up right away and put a new hose on. But the original hose had been chewed right near the tank by something. And that's where the spill came from. That's where the fumes came from. I have since caged that area with wire so that even if, even if an animal does get into the fenced in area, it can't chew that hose. Okay. Animals have been known to, in the hot air balloon business, have been known to chew the propane lines. There's something about an attraction with the rubber and the propane on it, whatever. The other thing you have with a hot air balloon that you have to be very careful of is mice. If mice get into the storage area of the trailer, and if I make sure my trailer is always locked, they get into the, and they chew the fabric. There's something in the fabric that attracts them. This is not a, it's a great thing. It's a beautiful hobby, but there's a lot to it. There's an awful lot to it. And, and uh, I enjoy it very much, and I don't want to lose it. Thank you. So, perhaps we should uh, examine the the um, the exact language of the appeal in front of us to address it narrowly. Well, I, I don't know, I mean, Sarah, you're going on and talking about the auto repair business and all sorts of things, which are completely outside the purview of our appeal which is now being. So I, I'd say okay. that we ought to narrowly address the question of the propane tax, since that's the main thing that has been appealed. Very good. Thank you. It seems to me that we have 
there was a permit issued for the tank for this use. We haven't really seen any evidence that it's not being used for what Mr. Florio says it's being used for. Well, I think all this should come in in our discussion of it because I think we've taken on all the evidence that we're going to get. So we want to close the public hearing. I make a motion to close the public hearing. Who is going to vote, by the way? Is it? It's going to be the three. Okay. Do I have a second? Second. 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 Second.
what I'm what I'm asking um, was for clarification of the the narrow issue or decided which to with my understanding from the appeal the um, desire for the building inspector to enforce on the propane issue we're not addressing the light issue at all. That's gonna be separate. So um, I think uh, I think we can make a motion and that will help clarify the positive and negatives. Would you make a motion to accept? Ah, yeah. Sure do it. Um,